We can also find a rate of change from an equation. Sometimes we're not given a graph, a picture, where we can physically draw a sketch of a tangent line, but we're given an equation, a mathematical relationship. And in this case, we're told, suppose an object moves according to the equation, x equals 1.4e to the point 3t. And we're given that equation instead of the graph. Now, we can make a rough sketch. It'll just be exactly that, a rough sketch. We don't have the exact graph, but you should know what this equation looks like when graphed. You should recognize this as exponential growth. e to the power of some number, and if it's a positive number there, it's exponential growth. So this graph is going to look something like this, some exponential growth curve. This is position versus time. Now, this is not a graph that we were given. This is not an accurate graph, so we can't find a rate of change by estimating a slope with a tangent line there. What is accurate, what we were given, is this equation. So that's what we'll use to come up with a, a value for the slope. This little sketch, though, will help give us a visual picture of our thought process. So we're told to find the rate at which x is changing when t is 5 seconds. So at some point in time here, 5 seconds, there's a certain position. And we want to find the slope of the graph at that point. Well, what we could imagine is a small time interval near 5 seconds. So let's say, let's imagine taking from 5 seconds to 5.1. And we can calculate the slope of this little segment right here, connecting those two points and we can see a rise over a run. Now that won't be exact and you can probably see that in fact this little segment here will be a little bit steeper than the slope at this point because the graph is curving upward so this point ends up a little bit on the high side but still this could be a pretty good estimate for the slope at this point. So let's find these values. Let's find x when t is 5, and we write that like this, x of 5, and we just put in the numbers, 1.4 times e to the power of 0.3 times 5, and we do that on the calculator, and it comes out to 6.274, and we find x of 5.1, and again, on the calculator, we just calculate 1.4 times e to the power of 0.3 times 5.1, and it comes out to 6.465. And then we calculate the slope, the rise over the run. Well, the rise is going to be the difference in those two values, the 6.274 and the 6.465. So our delta x over delta t is going to be the slope, the rise over the run. So that'll be 6.465 minus 6.274 over the run and you can see the the delta t the time interval there is 0.1 and we do the calculation and it comes out to 1.91 now that's not exactly the slope at 5 but it's a decent approximation now we can get a better approximation by using a smaller time interval it should be clear to you that if we make this interval right here really small we get a tiny little segment but instead of this point right here we end up with the point over here a lot closer to our original point and the little tiny segment down here that we'll be finding the slope of will be a better approximation to the slope at this particular point that we're interested in. So let's shrink the time interval and get a better approximation. So the next space on the page says we can get a better approximation by using a smaller time interval. So let's imagine doing something like this. Here's our curve and let's imagine taking our point, and this is the point we're interested in at 5 seconds, and let's imagine just coming just a little bit to the right to uh, 5.001 seconds. So we have a very small time interval here. Imagine that we're, we're zoomed in pretty tight on this region here, so this horizontal distance is only 1 1,000th of a unit. And let's calculate these two x values, remember this is our x-axis and this is t. Calculate those two x values and compute a delta x, that's this little interval, 
divided by a delta t, that little little interval, and that will be the slope of this little segment. And that'll be a good approximation for the slope at this point. A better approximation than if we were using a larger interval. So we can compute x at 5.001, and so on the calculator we just put in 1.4 times e to the 0.3 times 5.001 and we get this 6.276 I'm going to use a lot of digits here since we're going for accuracy 6.2762473 and x at 5 if we calculate this and take it out to several decimal places we get 6.274 three six four seven and then so our delta x over delta t the delta x will be the difference in these two values so we just subtract and then we divide that by point zero zero one that's our time interval it's really tiny and we get an answer of one point eight eight two six that's a little bit better approximation than our earlier approximation of 1.91. Now there's an even better way. Okay, watch this. We'll use what we call a symmetric difference quotient. Okay, let's draw our graph again. This is x and t and it's some exponential growth curve and we're concerned with this point at t equals 5 seconds. Now you can see because this graph slopes up it's getting steeper over here on the right side. These little little tiny pieces are getting steeper and steeper to the right. So anything, any estimate we do by incrementing to the right just a little bit is going to make a segment here that's a little bit steeper than the slope at 5. But going to the left it's becoming less steep. So if we were to go to the left a little bit we would get a segment that is a little bit less steep. So let's pick one point just a little bit to the right. We'll say 5.001 and one point that's just a little bit to the left. Let's use 4.999 and let's connect those two points and get a slope of that segment and that you can probably see is going to be a very good approximation to the slope of the curve at that point. So we can calculate the slope here we just need to compute these two values these two x values and we'll compute our delta x over our delta t. So what we need is a value for x at 5.001 and we have that already we did that in the last one it's 6.2762473 and we need to compute x at 4.999 and again on the calculator we put that and you can put the function in and use trace that's a handy way to get these values quickly it's 6.2724827 and those those are these two values right here and so then we can compute our delta x over our delta t delta x comes out to be 0 0.0037646 and our delta t be careful here this is our delta t we went 0 0.001 to the right and 0 0.001 to the left so our delta t is 0 0.002 and we calculate that and we get 1.8823 just a little bit different from our earlier estimate but it uh, it's pretty clear that this would be more accurate not perfect but it could be really really close any error introduced by the graph getting too steep on the right will at least in part be canceled out by the graph getting less steep on the left. They might not cancel out exactly but the, the errors will at least tend to cancel each other and we'll get a more accurate estimate that way. So that's how we can get an estimate of the slope of a graph at a particular point. The best way to do it would be to pick a point on one side and a point on the other and use those two points to calculate the slope of a little segment and the slope of that segment would be a good approximation to the slope of the graph or the derivative of the function at that point.